What's good, Internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome back to WWE 2K14. 30 years of WrestleMania today. WrestleMania 9, Yokozuna and Bret the Hitman Hart, and Hulk Hogan. Super kick on a stunned opponent, Irish whip, Bret Hart with moderate damage, and win by pinfall. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. And is for the WWE Championship. Introducing the challenger. Weighing 500 pounds, Yokozuna. It would seem that the odds would be in favor of that man, Yokozuna. As soon as Yokozuna came out to the ring, the sky became cloudy. That's a bad sign for Bret Hart. The odds makers here in Las Vegas have Yokozuna as the heavy favorite to win. No pun intended. No, pun intended, JR. Pun intended. Welcome to a fine Wednesday here on the program. Got some wrestling news. Got some SmackDown discussion. And things are happening in the world of wrestling. And his opponent from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, weighing 234 pounds, the WWE Champion, Red Hitman! Oh, the thing is so good. The legendary the is so good. wrestling heart family. There's the Hitman. It has been a hellacious week for this young man, but he is here and he is ready to fight. Yokozuna has not once looked away from the WWE Championship around Brett's waist. He is focused and ready for this challenge. The WWE Championship means so much to Bret Hart. It's all about earning respect and earning the WWE Championship. Something that Bret Hart has trained his entire career for. Put some respect on my name, playboy. Anyhow. So, according to Mark Henry, who would certainly be in, be in a position to know, it seems as if Alexa Bliss is clear to return to in-ring action after her various concussions and whatever other injuries were keeping her away from in-ring action competing and so now it's like all right well then where do you put her on raw because obviously right now she's in the authority position and there had been rumors that at tlc you would have corbin lose and then alexa would be end up being the gm of raw so how does that affect her in-ring return who knows but again it's december and not much happens in december you kind of spin your wheels for a little bit. Now then, speaking of people who are, I guess, cleared, but not in the ring, uh, Matt Hardy is saying he's not retired. He's like, no, 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 I was taking a little bit of time off to heal up my injuries, but I'm not retired. Even though it seemed like months ago, he pretty much said he was retired. So, it's wrestling, and getting guys to actually retire, Shawn Michaels, is, you know, difficult. It's very difficult. Because they just don't want to give it up. So, press A while near a standing, stunned opponent for a super kick. Press X while near an opponent off the ropes. And hold X while near a standing opponent. Kick! That was easy enough. Just held X. Now it's just getting Brett to moderate damage and then Irish whip him for a cutscene. Here we go. Yoko Zuna! So, elsewhere we have apparently ABE having their first tryout. Their first wrestling tryout in the great nation of India. And you would have thought that that would have happened while they had Jinder as the champion. But, uh, unfortunately, not the case. Now, will anyone from the great Kali's school end up being at those tryouts? I would assume probably. Will they sign anybody? Who knows? As we have clearly seen, WWE... Oh, yeah, right, Bret Hart. Yeah, right. Backdrop on Yokozuna. Yeah, right. I have my doubts, Bret Hart. I have my doubts. Just saying. Just saying. But Yoko here, getting those reversals missed over and over. Speaking of injuries, though, speaking of things that are happening with injuries, uh, I've heard kind of two different stories on what happened on Raw with Natalya going through the table. And one story was, oh, that was to, that, that was to have her taken out because of an injury to her, to her elbow that was le legit. The other story is, oh, they're going to set up for a, for a tables match at TLC. And kind of haven't heard what the deal is either way. On Natalia. Hopefully she's not hurt, but it's been kind of a lot of injuries going around as of late. Also, I guess breaking news this morning. Rest in peace to Dynamite Kid, 
who I've never heard anything good about. Look, it's sad when anyone dies, but I've never heard anything nice to say about Dynamite Kid. So, there is that. Anyhow, I guess... Oh, man, Yoko is just the appropriate speed for Yokozuna here, which is not very fast. Not very fast. So there is that. But SmackDown, obviously... Actually, no. Before SmackDown, also, perhaps back soon, Fondongo is seen back in the Performance Center, and he's been out for about five... Uh, about... Yeah, okay, Brett. Okay, Brett. Been out for about five months, and he had, like, an approximate six-month six time on his injury, so perhaps we'll get Brizongo back on Raw with some Fashion Files soon. But also, do you really want to see Fashion Files on Raw with the Raw writing team? as opposed to what it was good with a SmackDown writing team. They're different teams. And certainly I would put stock in SmackDown to have it good and Raw to not be as much because Raw. Anyhow, now we can pick him up and Irish whip the man. Yes, we can. And give me a cut. What? Come on. That should have still counted as an Irish whip. Boo! There we go. Cut scene. I mean, it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. A very effective Irish whip. Yokozuna is on a mission tonight. And when you get a Turn man this size motivated, it's hard to stop. Turnbuckle. Brett is down and he took the turnbuckle with him. Oh, that exposed turnbuckle is very dangerous. It can turn the tide of a match. Nope. I mean, look. Yokozuna goes face first into the exposed steel of the top turnbuckle. Sharpshooter. You have right. Bret Hart has a sharpshooter. Booty dust. Bret's got it locked in. Oh. Wait a minute. Mr. Fuji just threw something into the eyes of Bret Hart. And the ref didn't see it. Oh, Mr. Fuji and that salt. You better watch out. Win by pinfall. So we need a bonsai drop. Faux show. Faux show. On to Bret Hart. Faux show. Anyway, SmackDown Live this week. Open up with a contract signing for Becky and Charlotte and Asuka. And man, how many contract signings has Becky been a part of in her time in the business on SmackDown? It's been kind of ridiculous. There's been a lot. I'm just saying. They go to that, they go to that well perhaps one too many times, and that turned into a tag match between Charlotte and Asuka versus Mandy and Sonya Deville. So, that was a thing that happened. Here we go. Signature. Big belly to belly from the biggest belly in the business. And then I trip into the corner. And it is time for the bonsai drop, baby. Almost killed some, almost killed some, some jobber by actually going full weight on him that one time. Bonsai! It's a great finisher. Seriously, if you're that big, it's a great finisher. Two, three. Nobody's getting up from that. Nobody. Here is your winner and new WWE champion. Why is Hogan here? Why is Hogan here? Bret so Hart and Yokozuna in the sharpshooter until Mr. Fuji threw ceremonial salt in the hitman's eyes. Hogan! Hogan, you big man! <laughs> Bye, Yokozuna! Hogan! Bye, Yokozuna! This is your challenge. If any intestinal fortitude, you would accept my Yokozuna challenge. Come on! Come on, you yellow belly, come on! Brett's telling Hogan to go come for on. it! And Hulk Hogan is in the ring! Wait a minute! People were so oh, mad about this. Fuji was so mad. And, and Hogan wins the belt here. He was so mad. And here we go. Player one is now Hulk Hogan. Boo! Hit the leg drop. Boo! Like so mad about it because like people wanted at, at, at this point they had so much Hogan and so many years of Hogan people wanted something new and not Hogan as champion again like it was such a frustrating thing alright you've got an, a new star in Bret Hart finally you had Bret lose to the big heel cool 
And then here comes Hulk Hogan to do his Hulk Hogan thing, and it was just the worst. It was just the worst. Here is your winner and new WWE Champion, Hulk Hogan. I don't believe this. Hulk Hogan, with the blessing of Bret Hart, accepted the challenge and captured his fifth WWE Championship. The WWE title changing hands two times. What a two day times. it has been, and what a way to end WrestleMania 9. I'm pretty sure this was also Jim Ross's first actual mania doing commentary because he had gone from WCW to WAF. And thus ends the Hulkamania era. Let's head into the new generation. WrestleMania 10, Razor Ramon, Shawn Michaels, ladder match, baby. Get HBK to moderate damage, hit an objective, hit him with the ladder, and hit an objective. A historical event, WrestleMania 10, Madison Square Garden, Sunday afternoon, March 20th, with an unprecedented match. And who better to give it to you? Shawn Michaels, a ladder match, two belts hanging at the top of Madison Square Garden, along with all those people hanging from the rafters. The heartbreak kid is going to be up there taking what is rightfully his, the icy belt. Yo, boy toy, Keep you going. say you're the real champ, I say I. Too much confusion. WrestleMania 10, Chico. Somebody gonna decide. If it takes a ladder ring, no problem. There's no rules, no ref, no time limit. Somebody, Chico, leaves WrestleMania the real champ. Hey, yo. Ladies and gentlemen, in the following contest, there are no rules. The only way to win is to ascend the ladder and remove both belts to become the undisputed Intercontinental Champion. Introducing first, accompanied by Big Daddy Cool Diesel from San Antonio, Texas, weighing 234 pounds, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels has his sights set on Razor Ramon and the Intercontinental Championship hanging over the ring. Well, all right then. We had a triple threat match between Xavier Woods, Jey Uso, and Cesaro, which was fantastic. I'm, I'm assuming the match they're going to have at TLC is going to be fantastic. They had their custom New Day announce table once again. Awesome. And his opponent from Miami, Florida, weighing 289 pounds... Razor Ramon! You're talking about the bad guy. Take a look at it. Here he comes right now. I can tell you one thing. This is going to be a grueling matchup. Who will climb the ladder of success and become the undisputed Intercontinental Champion here at WrestleMania 10? As far as I'm concerned, Shawn Michaels is the undisputed Intercontinental Champion. The original champ. Never beaten for the title. What else can you say? This capacity crowd is ready to witness the first ever WrestleMania ladder match. Say hello to the bad guy. So Cesaro, once again proving pound for pound, he is amazing doing the swing with Xavier on his shoulders. I also appreciated Sheamus wearing both tag belts for, for some reason. It was pretty funny. And we found out that next week it will be another rap battle. But this time, between the Usos and Sheamus and Cesaro, and that's going to be weird. Potentially terrible, uh, but weird. Because at least with the Usos versus the New Day, that made some sense. And you had guys in there who were helping out, like, say, my boy Mega Ran uh, and such. So, I don't know. I don't know. So, I'll be curious, and hopefully they don't totally ruin it next week. But honestly, honestly, and honestly, you're never going to beat that line... Don't get it all R-rated like your boy Xavier Woods. That's, that's that can't, that can't be topped. There's no way. There's no way. Just the crowd reaction from that was just amazing. I'm so surprised I actually made it on TV. Anyway, so there was that. We continue our Lars Sullivan program where he's just having his different vignettes on both Raw and SmackDown, and no sign of what brand he's going to be on. Perhaps we'll find out at the Royal Rumble. I don't know. 
but it just keeps on going on each and every week with the kind of very similar or the same video packages they're playing. So there is that. Now then, Miz TV, the thing I was looking forward to most on this show, which was Daniel Bryan, the new Daniel Bryan on Miz TV, which was, uh, I'm really down for and into this angry college professor, heel, hippie, vegan Daniel Bryan. It's awesome. I love it, right? That's really good. I love D Daniel Bryan totally crapping all over the what chance, which is always a good thing because they're so annoying for any promo. Just so, so annoying. Um, but there was one thing, right? I loved him saying that the Yes Movement was dead and actually taking off the side plates on the belt. Now, Taz apparently had mentioned that on his podcast like two, two or three weeks ago. And he's kind of mad that, hey, they took my idea, right? But look, it's, it's, it's wrestling. If, it, if, it, if there's a good idea, you use that idea. Regardless of who, of who said the idea, right? But B, more importantly, if Daniel Bryan is going to go on these tirades about how the audience, these people, are harming the earth, etc., etc., right? And have this whole thing about, you know, methane and uh, carbons and climate change while wearing a belt made of leather... Come on, I want Daniel Bryan as a heel to come out with an organic WWE title would be amazing. Please do that. Steal that idea, Daniel. Please. It'd be great. Razor's Edge to Shawn Michaels. Good God. Folded him in half. Now then, we have a hidden objective, but also hit him with the ladder. Boom. Done. Done. What is my hidden objective? No, Shawn Michaels. There will be no comeback. There will be no comeback. For Shawn Michaels. Not happening. Sorry, Sean. Just gonna keep on hitting the ladder here. Sorry. Not gonna happen. Anyway. Uh, for as much as I crap on Raw for having matches we've seen 8,000 times. Looking at you. Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins. Not cool. Uh, SmackDown had Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton. Again. And I'm like... Look, I, I understand. The point of this match was to further... The Jeff Hardy and Joe deal, right? When it matters most, HBK always rises to the occasion. It's easy to rise to the occasion when you have a monster like Diesel lifting you up. Diesel coming in now. Oh, good God. There's no rule. There's no rules. You're out of He's thrown out of the garden. Diesel's going to be thrown out of WrestleMania 10. This is definitely going to even things out. It absolutely will, King. Listen to this crowd. Listen to this response. You could have put... He's already critical. He's already critical. You could have put any other heel in that position versus Jeff Hardy and had the exact same conclusion with that match. You didn't need it to be Randy Orton again. You could have put in Nakamura and it wouldn't have been a problem. Like... I don't get it. Did you? Did, did it have to be Randy Orton again? Now, had they had Rey Mysterio also interfere in there somehow, then sure, yes, you would have been furthering two angles. But 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 Mysterio was nowhere to be found. So what essentially was the point of having Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton again? I don't know. It was just kind of annoying, in my opinion. So I don't know. Anyway, yeah, you had Joe do the thing. He was in a bar and got in his distraction, and that was effective. And then Jeff Hardy lost, and that was the end of that chapter. Now then, we're going to have Charlotte and Asuka next week, so that's cool. And here, again, cutscene number two. Scoop slam! Good grief! Razor Ramon's going down to the outside. What's Razor Ramon doing? Oh, He's no. Not the concrete. That's the sort of thing that ends careers, JR. 
the self-proclaimed bad guy will go to any lengths to defend his title here hey, tonight. Yo. Here we go! Razor's Edge! Nope. Because of a desperation move, sends Razor Ramon to the concrete. I could have been... Wait, no! Really? Really, Sean? Really, Sean? Don't you cheap out on me. Don't you dare. Don't you dare, man. Not cool. It's not it's not propped in the corner. It is not propped into the corner. It's not that's what I actually need. So I need Sean to get out of the ring here because I've got things to do. I got things to do with this ladder. It needs to be propped in the corner. There, lean. That's what I want. That's what I want. Now then. Hey Sean! No, come on, man, really? Why is it every time? No, come on, man! Seriously. Don't reverse it. Thank you. That's all I wanted. All I wanted. Get up. Get up. Hey, yo. Another. Razors. Edge. Cheek, go. So your main event was Miz and AJ Styles. Uh, highlighted by Kenya Bryan on commentary, which was amazing, as usual. Saying that he hopes his daughter grows up to kick hundreds of men in the groin, and he hopes that his daughter kicks Byron Saxton in the groin was a great line. Loved it. Awesome. Here is your winner and new undisputed WWE Intercontinental Champion, Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon has done it. He has captured both Intercontinental titles. I can't believe it! Razor is the undisputed WWE Intercontinental Champion. But at what price? What did it cost him? I don't think either of these superstars will ever be the same. These matches leave a permanent mark on you. What a matchup for Shawn Michaels. Now this right here, apparently Shawn told Razor, get back up that ladder and do that to get that iconic shot of him holding both belts on top of the ladder. Anyway, I'm a tax slug. Thanks for watching. More videos every day. I'll see you next time right here on this channel. And I'm out.